Hello. Now we're going to talk about the second lap, lap two. I hope this is focused on me because uh, I was holding it in front of my hand. If I'm not, too bad. Okay, the second lap is pretty easy and actually you can be done in about 20 minutes if you do most of the work before you come to class. I'll send you a link to the Excel spreadsheet you're going to need and uh, so you can fill it all out beforehand. The first part of the lab is all done completely online with significant figures. It's about the only time you'll deal with significant figures in this class. Not a big deal. Nothing to hand in about that part. The next part uh, involves vectors, and this whole lab is involving vectors, but this is in a particular notation called IJ notation. Now what you want to do for this is, it's, it's really very simple, and the mistakes that people make on this are not listening to what I'm going to say right now. IJ notation is, just means that in the X direction it's an I, and in the Y direction it's a J. So if you have go over 7 in the x direction, that would be 7i. And you go down 3, that would be minus 3j. You add up all the i's and all add up all the j's. You write the answer down like this, 7i minus 3j. Sounds easy enough, right? Now, one important point. There's a little nifty thing with Excel. If you write a negative sign as the first letter, it thinks you're writing a number. Now, if you had negative 7i minus 3j, that becomes a problem because that's text. I mean, it thinks it's a number and it gives you an error. So how do you get around that? Well, it's actually pretty easy. What you do is you put an apostrophe. That character right there. See that? Uh, let's back it up a little bit. This one right here first, apostrophe. And then you say negative sign right there, seven, where's my finger, there it is, plus, oh sorry, I, plus three J. Now you only need to do that for text, in other words a combination of numbers and letters, or just letters, that starts with a negative sign. If you're writing negative 17.5321, just write negative 17.5321. Remember, you only need to do that for a text that starts with a negative sign. For some reason, every semester, somebody doesn't hear that, and every time throughout the rest of the semester that they have to write a negative number, they put an apostrophe in front of it. I'm like, why? Did you understand that? So anyway, again, for this next part, for this part here, the answer should be 7i plus 2j or something like that. They should not be parentheses 7 comma 2 or 7.0i plus 2.0j, just real simple, 7i plus 2j. Got it? I knew you could. All right, for the next part, um, that's done entirely online, well, not entirely online, what you have to understand there is the numbers are given like 120 comma 28. What does that mean? That means that the vector has a magnitude of 120 at an angle of 28 degrees. So what you have to do for that is you have to break it down into the x and y components. So let's do that for just a minute here. Remember the rules. Those are the rules. All right. So let's say you have 120 comma 28. Back it up a bit. Well the x component, that means it's going to be like this, 120, it's a triangle, at 28 degrees. So you got an x, all right, an x and a y. How do we figure that out? Well the x component is going to be 120 times the cosine of 28 degrees. Likewise, the y, the, well, the y is going to be 120 sine of 128 degrees. Okay, so then what you're going to have to do is you have two of those. You'll have two of those and you have to add them. So you figure out both of these numbers and you do it for this one here too, which I just really like that. 
you add the x components, you add the y components. And you're going to end up with something like 57 comma minus 57. Okay, that's easy enough. Now you can, what you can do here, which is kind of useful, and it's a very good idea, I can't, uh, well, I can't require you to do it because I can't check this, but there's a website that they give you in the lab manual that you can go to and you can check your work. Might be a little hard to use at first, but I think you can get the hang of it. If you have any problems, let me know. All right, so that's the, f again, we've done all this, and all you needed was the Excel spreadsheet. You didn't need to be in the lab at all. Pretty cool, huh? So for the next part, you're gonna be adding vectors and figuring out the resultant vector to balance things out. You're gonna be checking your work on the force tables in the, in the physics lab. Okay, so how do we add vectors? Well, there's two ways to do it. One is a graphical method, which you'll see in the previous sections on that web page. And it's really just drawing and estimating. You measure the length of lines, you read the degrees off of the uh, protractor, which is that piece of paper in the, with the uh, angles and things like that. Use a ruler, you can do the whole thing with a ruler. Easy, metric ruler. Easy enough. Okay. The second way is to use the trig, just like we did in that part right there, to figure out all the different components. It's called the component method. So you have the graphical method and the component method. You figure out both of them. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, in the component method, you figure out both the x and the y components for all the vectors. You add them up. Now, the resultant vector will be one direction, something like if we're looking at it on a plot, it might look like this, okay? Well, this is our origin right here. Now, what you want is the balancing vector, which is going to be exactly the same length. So if this is 11, this one's going to be 11 too. See, 11, 11. The difference here is it's 180 degrees different, okay? So. Once you figure out those angles, then you go to the force table and you're going to it, check it out. Now here is the force table. What you have here is these hooks hanging down and you put weight on them. The weight is supposed to simulate the length of the vector and the angle, see they got angles up here is supposed to simulate, well it is, the direction of the vector. So remember, vectors have two properties, magnitude and direction. So for this particular vector, we've got 300 grams hang on the weight, 300 grams of weight on this hanger, okay? And it's at an angle of 248 degrees. I'm using the outer the, uh, the outer uh, numbers, you can use the inner or outer as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter. And what's going to happen is you put, you're going to put, for the, for the first of these, you're going to put the weights on that it tells you to at the angles it tells you to, and you figure out the third one to balance the whole thing out. Okay, now the first time you use the graphical method, and you should use the component method too, I find the component method to be more accurate in general. So you get it all balanced out, okay, and then like I said, you could do this in the lab. So then I'm going to come over. You see this pin right here? I am going to pull the pin. Now if you did everything right, then it'll just stay there. And I'll move the thing around. And I'll tell you you did a good job and I'll initial your paper so you can be done. If I did it wrong, that was wrong. Okay? That's what happens when you don't have the right weights. Now, one of the th common mistakes people make when they're doing this is, like I said, on that one on that one hanger, we had 300 grams on there. So that vector, according to what we were doing before, would be, uh, according to the lab, would be 30, right? Wrong. These guys here have a mass too. In fact, the, the hangers weigh 50 grams. So you have to take that into account when you're making your uh, calculations. 
So this vector, this one wasn't 300 grams, it was 350 grams, or 35 millimeters, according to the lab. Okay? You can figure out your answers to both of those um, balancing forces beforehand, and you come in, all you have to do is set up the, four, you have the rest of it all filled out on the Excel spreadsheet, bring it on a flash drive. You can even have the, uh, the force table stuff filled out. All you have to do is check your work, and you're done. Sound like a plan? See you on Friday. Have a great day.